The Periodic Table of Mechanical Elements, constructed from definitions by Lawrence Morris and Jared Dwarshus, December 2008. Today we're going to construct the periodic table of mechanical elements by placing all the mechanical elements on a grid which reflects the relationships between them. We will begin by describing the rules by which the grid is constructed. We'll start by examining any particular box and describe the relationships that it has with its neighbors. So choose an element for a box on the grid. If you look at this neighbor to the left, that's a derivative with respect to time. And if we look at the one to the right, that's an integral with respect to time. If you look below, that's a derivative with respect to distance. And if we look above, that's an integral with respect to distance. Now, by looking at the rules carefully, you can observe that this is a derivative with respect to velocity. And this is an integral with respect to velocity. And similarly, this is a derivative with respect to the product of distance and time. And this is the integral with respect to the product of space and time. So these are the rules we have that relate one box to another. Um, you can observe that a box up here to the left is related by a velocity, and going down here, it's dividing by a velocity. Going up this way, you're multiplying by distance and time, and coming down here, you're dividing by distance and time. Okay, so now we'll proceed to uh, describe the layout of the mechanical elements themselves. And for convenience, we will do a 4x4 four four grid. There are more than this many elements, but this is a good start. Using the rules, you can cause the chart to extend in all four directions as far as you happen to need, and maybe further. Okay, now we'll start with force. That's one of my favorites, and we'll put it in an arbitrary box. This looks like a good one right here. So this is force. And then we know that work is the integral of force dot dx. And according to our rules, the integral with respect to x, so if we start here, integrate dx. That tells us then that work or energy belongs here in relation to force. And then we know by definition power is the time derivative of energy. And if we look at our diagram here, a derivative with respect to time says the power belongs here. Uh, next, we'll return to force, and note that force is the time derivative of momentum. And so, if this is force here, momentum belongs here. And then, <coughs> we will look at can and say that momentum is mass times velocity. And if we look 
look at our rules here, this is the integral with respect to velocity. And so we can see then that if we were to start down here at mass, and integrate or multiply by velocity, we would end up at momentum. So mass belongs in that box. Now from this point, we can do some fairly straightforward filling in of the other boxes. And we'll do that like so. Mass divided by a distance is your linear density. And mass times a distance gives you moment. And mass times two distances gives you moment of inertia. Which we call I, among other things. Now, if you think carefully, we know that impedance is the units for impedance are kilograms per second, and that looks an awful lot like impedance will then go here. And then from Hooke's law, we know that force equals the integral of k dx. So the Hooke's law k goes here. And then we also know that pressure is force over area, and so we will put pressure down here. And there's, okay, that's most of the, the elements that he have names. There's another one, a little obscure, which we won't describe in too much detail. This action, and it goes right here. Now we have several boxes here that don't have names in particular and it's probably best to leave them unlabeled. You could take this box for example and say oh that's clearly the time derivative of force but it's also the space derivative of power so it's sort of dangerous to give it one emphasize one aspect of its nature when it has many other aspects that are also equally important. 